Please pray with me. Gracious God, help us to be open to let you write whatever you want. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Nicodemus got the tickle. You know, that internal nudge that tells us we have a need for something. And when we get them, they're usually very small and quiet within us. Some of the tickles are little or no significance. I, I want to take a different route to work today. No big deal. Some a little bit more significance. I, I want a vacation in the desert southwest. A few of those tickles, those nudges, are life-changing if we follow that urge. When we do, we know that it will change us significantly, and so we approach it cautiously. It's almost like we are aware that we want something more than what we have, and at the same time, are fearful. We know that there is more than what we have and who we are. It can often be connected to a lack, a need we feel in our lives. Nicodemus got the tickle. He was a leader of the Jews. He was already doing the religious things he was supposed to be doing. He was in the right religion. He was serving the true God. Yet something was drawing him. There was more. He had heard about Jesus and he was curious. Doesn't that describe us sometimes? Curious about Jesus? Nicodemus wanted to find an answer to his tickle, but he didn't want to commit to any possible consequences for his life. Even when we want to change, we don't want to change. He comes to Jesus at night. He can address his tickle and no one will know. His life as he lives it will remain safe. His life will remain in his own control. Change will not be forced on him. He speaks to Jesus, trying to get rid of that feeling. He's a bit off balance when he says, I know you are a teacher from God. It's evident in the things that you're able to do. But Jesus is having nothing of the safe conversation. He immediately invites Nicodemus into a seismic change in his life. It's not enough to have a taste. You've already had a small dose of God and it almost has you inoculated. You are not immune to God, but that's a danger that you face. Go all in. Be reborn. Be made new. Let your internal light be from above for your control is not bringing you life. But Jesus, you don't know what you're asking. I have a life, you know. I'm important. I make a good living. I have friends who have certain expectations on me. I have a family, and, and, and they're comfortable with life as it is. How can anyone be changed like this? Who can surrender so much? What could be worth the upheaval? Nicodemus, do you really want to be part of the kingdom of God? You have a choice to make. You can keep your life and its connections to the values of this world, or you can be near to God and hold to God's values. In fact, your connection to the world keeps you in slavery. You have to go where the money dictates. You have to go where your social group dictates. You have to go where your boss tells you to go. You have to go where your fear pushes you. This is not so with the Spirit of God. With God, there is true freedom. The Spirit goes wherever it wills. Living in the Spirit, you can too. Nothing will hold you but God. 
At this point, we don't know what Nicodemus does with his tickle. Jesus turns his attention now to all the others who are around him, and he tells them and us that we are deciding between darkness and light. God sent Jesus to bring light into this dark world, but Jesus doesn't force himself. He doesn't write on your heart without permission. Jesus invites us to leave our paths, our paths that are unable to bring life, and invites us to respond to the tickle that the Holy Spirit puts in us to be dissatisfied with what matters less and to give ourselves wholly to what really matters. Fortunately, we have a good idea about what happens to Nicodemus, what choice he makes. For a few chapters later, Jesus is causing trouble, get this, by inviting people to get ready to receive the Holy Spirit. Freedom is dangerous, folks. The same Holy Spirit that goes wherever it wills. The religious leaders are thinking about arresting Jesus and are arguing among themselves about it. Nicodemus is there. He's one of them. And they congratulated themselves that none of them believe in Jesus. And Nicodemus speaks up and reminds them that they can't judge a person without a hearing. That's their law. And they turn to him and say, are you a Galilean too? How can you have a worse insult than that, huh? No prophet comes from Galilee. And that settled that. <clears throat> then, later in the gospel, after Jesus has been crucified and taken off the cross, two men become part of Jesus' passion. One was Joseph of Arimathea, a secret follower of Jesus. Isn't that too good? A secret follower of Jesus. And he had arranged with Pilate to take away the body of Jesus. Nicodemus, we read, joins him. And together they prepared his body for burial and placed him in the tomb. Secret no more. The gift they gave to Jesus prevented them from living a secret. Out in the open, they did this act of mercy for Jesus. The unsettled feeling within him had led him on a path. His life was changed. He made a decision for life. And he was now part of the new creation that Jesus was bringing. Do you have a tickle? An unsettled feeling? Are you coming to Jesus at night? Do you need something more in your life? Do you feel trapped? Are you wondering if the things that you're doing with your life have true consequence? Is life a weight that makes it difficult to feel like your head is above water? Do you need the freedom the Holy Spirit can bring to your life? The same Jesus that offered Nicodemus life offers it to us. There is no trick involved. There are no magic words. There is no force. I'm not even sure that there is a hurry other than that internal push that you might be feeling from the Holy Spirit. All it takes is a turn from your path to God's. That's what repentance is, a turn. If you turn toward Jesus, he will guide you. The Spirit will fill you and move you in freedom. And you might even end up at the foot of the cross extending mercy to Jesus. 
Amen.